these two notes are coming at you. They're a distance apart. They're measurements of half steps. Notes touching each other. Once again, it can be two letters, or it can be from a sharp to a letter, or from a letter to a sharp. You can see it. Letter to sharp, sharp to letter I mean, letter to sharp, or letter to letter. Half steps. It's the beginning of intervalizing. Trying it. Okay, so now we have these two touching each other and these two touching each other. When we put them next to each other, like we put a sharp in between two letters, we get a hole. When we get a letter in between a sharp to a letter, because remember there's instances where there are letters to letters, like in B, C, B, C, and E, F, E, F. In order to make a hole, we have to put it in between. We're starting to look at the in-between note. The new definition of distance is determined by in-between. In-between notes, not the actual notes that are the distance, but how many notes are in between that distance? So we say a half step, there is no note in between because it's touching each other. Letter to letter sharp to letter, but then if you go from letter to letter, sometimes you usually get a sharp in between. You get that one note in between. That in between, this is what we're talking about, so cool. If you have one note in between, you have a whole. You have two halves, guaranteed, because a half and a half equals a whole. But a half and a half from sharp to sharp, which every sharp or at least goes one whole, has one note in between. You can see it between D sharp and F, between C sharp and D sharp, there's a D in between. Between F sharp and G sharp, there's an a G in between. Between a, a G sharp and A sharp, there's a, a A in between. Point being this, in between notes are guaranteed Tests of what is the distance defined as an interval between two notes can be measured by the in-betweens. Yes, it can be measured by the mathematical scale of we jump a whole step and then another whole step and then like a like a little bit. One, then down a whole octave, taking this little set right here and moving this set of octaves, kabling, down an octave, bling, down another octave. We're coming back to the center and then moving up. But the point is, is that what's in between? What's in between? What's in between these? What's in between these octaves? A lot of notes. There's a lot of notes. Go back to chromatic city now. Look at it. How many notes are between E and E? If you're looking at E and E, how many notes are in between? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11 notes in between E and E. That means there's 11 notes in between every octave. Look, go to G to G. Here's G to G. Up in between, just in between, not counting G. In between. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There is still 11 notes in between because the keyboard is built on in-betweens. In-betweens are half steps. In-betweens are cool ways to count out things. Like I said, in between a second is one note. From E to F sharp, there's one note in between. From F to G, there's one note in between. F sharp. From, from F sharp to G sharp, there's one note in between. G. Anyways, the point being that in-betweens are great. Two. Two is a whole step away from one. What's so cool about that? Look at this. On a keyboard, you can go all kinds of different. What is in between? A two has one note in between. What is in between? Wait a minute. So, in betweens are important. In between, a whole step is one note. In between F and G is F sharp. In between G sharp, F sharp and G sharp is G. A M3 is the next big great thing. An M3 is what I introduced last semester is called a boot 
M3. Putting the word boot in there, just so you remember there's something interesting about this. It's not a three, it's an M3. It's what's called a minor three. But we just need to refer to it as an M3. Why? Because that's all it needs to be in hold. Just like, I'm not talking about major shot. We're talking about going one whole step and then one half step. In between, you know, shrinking that second whole step by one half step, it had to be lettered, lettered something. And it was called a little M and then three. Gone. M3. It has two notes in between. If a two had one note in between, the, and the next squeezing apart you would ever see would be to go to two notes in between. That is labeled an M3. Ging and mallet. Gong. Why is this important? Can you see your M3s plain sharps only? Remember what I was saying? Sharp, 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 sharp. Since from one to three that big, I'm gonna lower it just by one half step into that in between. So if I had E to G sharp was my regular three with one, two, three in between. If I make only two in between, I get to an M3. Two in between from F to G sharp, or F sharp and G sharp. Two in between of from F sharp to A. Two in between G and G sharp are the in-betweens. G, uh, G to A sharp, uh, G sharp and A are the in-betweens. A sharp to B, uh, A and A sharp are the in-betweens. A to C, um, A sharp and B are the in-betweens. The knowing that there's two notes in between gives you an M3 is very important. Because sometimes you're gonna have to jump a three with three notes in between. And sometimes you're gonna have to jump a boot, let's think of the snow or something like that, a little bit shorter than a three, only two notes in between, distance from one, intervaling here to get an M3. So, so far we have a one as our first interval. Can I have a gong here? Because I've been holding a mallet. We have a two as our second interval. We have a M3, remember, which is just a little bit less, you know, distance from, it's a boot, like a snow boot. I like that. Wait, hold on. When you take notes, you know, this is what I always tell people, it's great. You really take notes. You don't take these kind of notes where you have to translate them into these letters. No. You take this kind of note with a little notebook. I asked the, the, uh, the prop department to get me a notebook so I could show what I really mean by using a notebook, like a regular spiral notebook. So they got me this size notebook. So then, you know, in the next semester, I said, hey, could you go and kind of reach out for that and get me a little bigger one? Because it would be great if you got me a little bigger one because it's really demonstrated that you don't really use this little one all the time. You could if you want to. So they went and they got me this one. So it's gone a little bit bigger. Not quite still that regular school size, but this is cool too. But anyways, so anyways, I'm talking about that the, uh, the uh, interval, an M boot, Three, M3, M3, like boot, like winter boot, like winter, it takes a little bit longer to, uh, harder to move from one to three is because you're in a boot, like a winter boot. I'm trying to think of something why I thought of M3 was a boot, and that's the best I can do. But I wrote it down in my little notebook as a sentence. Sometimes I write just letters, like, you know, A or E or D or C sharp or something. Okay, so now here I am with the, M th with the third, which is a regular spring step of three notes in between or two notes in between with an M3. So that to me is really cool. So I'm in betweens and I've got a two in between and a one in between is a two. So anyway, on the guitar neck, a movement of a whole step is one whole step is one note in between or one fret in between. That movement is called a to move from number one to number two. If you move one more half step or one more fret on that fretboard, in other words, moving from E, I move from F to a half step. No, I don't want that. I never use that. I'm going to use two as a whole step, one note in between. If I move one more half step, if I just go one more half step, the next door neighbor to that two, I get to M3's house distance.
from any interval. It's two notes in between. It sounds weird because you're going to M3 and it's two notes in between, but it's still great because on the keyboard, you need to know that because you gotta always measure yourself because you never know, like from F sharp to A is an M3, you know, because there's two notes in between, G and G sharp. It's just harder because if you know if there's three notes in between, you're on a three. It's the difference. If you're on an M3, you got two notes in between. If you're on a three, you got three notes in between. This is important to remember because they're two different intervals. This is what I'm talking about. There are intervals to know. So we just learned a one, a two, a M3 and a 3. A 2 has one note in between. An M3 has two notes in between. Anywhere you start, on the keyboard here, is a F. If I want two notes in between, and I went to G sharp, I would be going an M3. If I went F and I went three notes in between, it would be F sharp, G, A sharp, G sharp, to A, that would be three notes in between. That would be a three. If I was on F sharp and I went G, A sharp, A, and I went to A sharp, then that would be three notes in between. That would be a three. That's an interval. Hey, want to go a three? Go three notes in between anywhere you start, anywhere you depress on the keyboard, and you will have gone a third. Three notes in between. But I also want to say this. It's either direction so far. Let's remember, through the MIDI signals, which I don't have the bling, well, I do here, signaling at you through the fork cable, talking about intervals. So if you have an M3, there's two frets in between. If you have a three, there's three frets in between. Bingo. By the way, if you go to a four, there's four frets in between. Not going any further than that. I just want to go back a little bit. M3s again. Okay. Which is, whoa! M3, which is one whole step added to one half step, or as I call it, two notes in between. Gong. Gong! Wait. Mallet. Gong. Kind of just about like hand. Boot M3. This M3 is an existence of an interval. It is the actual fourth interval we're learning because if you think about it, one was the first interval we learned. Second, number two was the second interval we learned. Three was the third interval we learned. M3 is the fourth interval we're learning. There's a fourth interval before we even go to number four, and that is M3. Because remember, there's 12 intervals. Can't get them all tonight. Gonna try to get as far as I can. But you know, when we're talking intervals, we're trying to do a distance, and we're trying to see a sight, and we're trying to guarantee, are we a M3 away from that one? Or are we a three away from that? We learned about letters. Now we're gonna to start to learn those letters in twos. In other words, playing two of them at the same time or playing them blink, 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 broken. Not at the same time, but like a, like a broken chord, like a picking of a guitar where it go ping, pong, ping, pong, ping. Arpeggiated sometimes would be called. Or just broken chord, broken picked chord, or that way between one note and another note can be in an interval between one, two, do, ding, do, ding, do, ding, do, ding. We can have much many more intervals than one and two. And that's what we've been learning. This is already a given. We already know this is practice all their twos. We see all our twos is one note in between. That's really great to see what an interval looks like because we're gonna see two more intervals very shortly called a three and a four. How do you find out that you're on a three? Guaranteed, guaranteed to be on a three, you're going to have three notes in between. Absolutely, absolutely. To do a three from a two, going from one to three, remember going from one to two is kind of weird because you only have one note in between, but going from one to three, 
you have two no three notes in between. Makes total sense. Three notes in between gets you two or three. What do you mean by three notes in between? If I'm starting on E, then I count in between. The next note, F, the next note, F sharp, the next note, G, that's one, two, three. One, two, three. Then the next note after that is the third away from E. Guaranteed. Because in keyboard, see how you go, sometimes you go from a letter side to a sharp side with a three. Let's test the F to A. You need F sharp, G, and G sharp in between to get from F to A. Then you know you're to from one, two, three. Why is that important? Because sometimes your three is from one, is from a letter side to a sharp side. And sometimes a three is from a letter side to a letter side. And sometimes a three is from a sharp side to a sharp side. And sometimes a three is from a sharp side to a letter side. From a sharp side to a letter side. From a letter side to a sharp side. So you have to see those. Yes, you can chromatically move, like chromatic steady would, which is to learn in chromatic steady to just slide with the next note down, whatever is touching, whether it's on the sharp side or the letter side, doesn't make a difference because you have touch now because you're playing into the keyboards, really sunken in there in the street. Something that makes sense, three notes in between. From here, the root, number one. I have three notes in between and I get to ding a three versus ding an M3 versus other dong, a second. So versus a one, a two, or a three, a M3, or a three, I've got how many intervals? One, two, three, four. Just gone through four different intervals that aren't that hard to figure out. Oh, I don't know, man. That's not, that's pretty hard. No, it's not. Watch this. If you have a, if you have three notes in between, wait, 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 if you have three notes in between, you have a three. If you have two notes in between, you have an M3. It's not hard at all. If you have one note in between, you have a two. If you have two notes in between, you have an M3. And if you have three notes in between, you have a three. It sounds whacked, but it's great. You know why? Because it just happens to be that the WW plus says to half, which in other words, two halves plus two halves, three notes in between, two halves, two halves plus one more half equals five halves, is really a fourth. What an M3 looks like, a four is important. Four notes in between is getting quite a distance. You are really talking about four notes in between. No matter what I have, how many of these letters I have, four notes in between is quite a lot. If I have all these pieces of wood and they would represent a key of piece and they are, are keys, look how many notes in between, four notes is in between. Well, there's four notes right there. <laughs> if they were in between here, there'd be a lot of notes in between, quite a distance on a keyboard. Just one note in between is not that far a distance, but it's important because sometimes you have to go from a letter to a letter with one sharp in between, or you have to go from a sharp to a sharp with one note in between, or sometimes you have to go from a letter to a sharp with a letter in between, all kinds of different feels and looks. Well, that means the same distance that if you went to a four, you have to know. You not only have to know what a one, what a, excuse me, what a unison, well, unison is easy and an octave is the same note that you're playing in your thumb, you're playing in your fourth finger. What's that part? Oh yeah. Sight. Those two notes at one time accurately. That's the project. Can we learn those intervals of all of those chromatic city possible letters? If I am deciding that we can do it, the only way I can say is your sight will pick up quickly what they sound like. I mean, your hearing will pick up what they sound like, but your sight will pick up what they feel like. Because as soon as you can confirm that you've got an interval, like we were talking about a second, let's just go a little further. Let's go to a fourth. There's four, no four notes in between. See what I mean by four notes in between? From E to A is not only one, two, three, four, you can't guarantee that because watch, if I just count letters one, two, three, four, it works out that I have four notes in between. 
F, F sharp, G, and G sharp. But look at this, if I go from F to B, I have five notes in between. One, two, three, four, five. It's like if I counted only on the letter side and I went one, two, three, four, and I thought that was a four, it's not a four. It's wrong, it's a plus four because that has five notes in between you. Boot, it's, if, it has, if it has a three notes in between, it's a three. If it has four notes in between, it's a four. Decided, 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 decided. Forever and forever and forever. Repeated, 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 over and over. Three notes in between. So what am I talking about when I say see it? Well, I'm talking about taking this. Your eyes and looking at the keys and being able to see what letter you want to see, you know, whether it's a G sharp or an M3, an interval, seeing what does it look like to have a second? What does it look like to have a plus fourth? What does it look like to have a third? What does it look like to have a sixth? What does it look like to have a fourth? Okay, my point is this. What does it look like to have a whatever? Is because your eyes can learn quicker than your letters, quicker than knowing, oh, that's this letter and this letter together.